going on, y'all? My name is Amari the Rebel. And I'm Mistress Pegasus. And <laughs> this is Tribe Chat, the long form podcast for alternative sexuality from a black perspective. Mm. We make you think, we make you laugh, and we make you come. And we are actually recording to you exclusively from the New Society for Wellness Sex Club located in Lower Manhattan. Manhattan in the house. <laughs> yes, um, right about now. I thought it was important for us to get in touch with y'all. It's been a long time that we've been away, and like I really wanted to get into chopping it up into some of what we have done since tribe chat was here and since I it started <laughs> and a little bit of the trajectory of where we got so oh, what was going <laughs> we're still unprofessional we drinking i'm thirsty i'm sorry now also <laughs> make sure that you guys stay tuned because listen in addition to some brand new content exclusive episodes with some sexy guests we also are going to be giving you guys some information about discounts one to this organization right here, <laughs> the New Society for Wellness Clubhouse. Matter of fact, um, if you stay tuned, we may have a promo code ready for y'all. Because Absolutely. in addition to hosting some real sexy, sex positive events, there's also going to be a lot of adult content that's going to be filmed. I know I got some things lined up. Before I got into filming, Daniel and I was talking about some collaborations that we have here. They even opening up some brand new locations. So y'all guys stay tuned with us as we bring you updates for a lot of organizations and a lot of discounts and information from some of our sexy friends and colleagues in this adult industry and sex positive space for professionals. And up and coming events and getaways and a whole bunch of other stuff. Our merch and everything, baby. <laughs> So I was talking about like yo part one, you know. I wanted to get into um, episode one. Do you remember episode one? I do not remember episode one. We've shot a lot of episodes. So episode one, what I wanted to get into was the pilot episode, right? So it comes back full circle. One of the things that's real fire about that is the guest that we have on episode one ended up being the executive producer for the entire season for season three. Shout out to Mark King and <laughs> hey Mark funny thing since we and are here in um the new society for wellness club we had an event they came by and brought some drinkable thc we was getting saucy that was such a time for june team celebration and it was good too <laughs> All right, so when the first episode came we was in a development stage of that like um before we got into the official first season of the podcast i sat and i met with my mentor Weezy from Horrible Decisions and she gave me a little bit of information as far as the layout you know what I'm saying per instructions for whom designed the show uh, Saroyal Washington so I got the information from Weezy and Saroyal took a lot of the information and was like alright so here's where we this at this is what we gonna do so uh, the first episode is a true story this is on <laughs> Facebook I really was on Facebook and y'all know if you ever had anybody in your motherfucking inbox you get these spam bots all the fucking time mm -hmm. this one was the bitcoin one dude was talking about hey listen have you heard about bitcoin that was real shit i really was talking about fucking his wife <laughs> yo yeah i don't really facebook much so i get the bitcoin shit and all of the advertisements in my dm on uh instagram but you know so like when i was talking about fucking his wife and shit before i even bring this <laughs> into the idea of putting it on the podcast if you guys know we're in a lifestyle community we're in a lot of groups so we talked about right. it in the group chat and niggas was laughing but mm -hmm. then yo when they was talking about I said yo he blocked me at the end of the conversation they was like I don't know why I had to think like yo hold on like when I'm talking to these people like do y'all think that this is serious when y'all say hey hold on really like what's the big deal hey fuck his wife <laughs> or do y'all think this is just oh y'all was being tongue in cheek thinking that this shit was hilarious <laughs> everybody is not where we at though so you know you kind of sort of gotta feel out the energy of the room everybody ain't the same but listen he stepped in the ring so he got what he got speaking of which yo look man for real we yo customary to how we work man we work out of the primarily the studio and canal street which is right around the corner from <laughs> here is right around the corner from here the what the fuck shout out to what the fuck studios yeah i came in there and pegasus I had to wait for her for a substantial long time. A long time. Because I'm on CP time. Unfortunately, that that's just one of those things. Ah, 
Time ain't my shit. Sorry. That kind of gets into a thing where, like, that gets expensive and it gets it does. frustrating. You it know is what I'm very saying? frustrating. Mark came on live, you know <laughs> what I'm saying, during the time when we wanted to get into talking into the discussion. And we had a layout. So when Mark came on, I ran through a couple of things. Uh, Giuliani was in some trouble. I know that was part of the Habari guy. The, yeah, with the daughter, the Giuliani. <laughs> no, that was, it was another thing. I think Giuliani had some sex scandal that was going on and some shit at the time. I remember talking about that. No, no, Cuomo. Cuomo had uh, Cuomo. We had a governor for if you guys are all from New York City. You guys remember Cuomo? Mm -hmm. You remember the shit that he did where there was allegations about him kissing a woman without her consent? Mm. That shit that I was talking about. Um, I remember we were talking about that. We talked about that. Uh, we talked about how we got into the perspective roles in and Zori Kabila. We got a real good shout out to Phoenix. Hey, Phoenix, Kazo. Yes. <laughs> So that would close out season, um, I'm sorry, not season one, episode one. Episode one, from season one. Mm -hmm, from season one. Yeah. Episode two, this was actually one of the Hallmark episodes right here, because it just happened like that. We moved mm -hmm. fast. Episode two, the story that you guys know about that episode, y'all guys know a uh, personal friend of mine in the uh, adult industry, also actress, Ariana Starr. Right. So Ariana Starr is in a relationship, and she just recently got married. Um, Shout out! Congratulations! Yes. <laughs> such a beautiful individual. Such a beautiful individual. All right. So check. We wanted to talk a little bit about like sort of direction that we was going. I wanted to talk to her about like how her progress from actually starting off in Hollywood as a regular actress and then going to adult industry we were right. talking about that and then mm -hmm. since her now husband was on the show she was talk we, we got into talking a little bit about like yo the transition that she made and like yo how this impacted the relationship first we were talking about how they met that was a wild ass story do you remember that yeah you know what I'm saying <laughs> well, like yo homie was watching her porno with, with his current girlfriend yeah 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 you know and what I'm saying? to see her come across the across the screen mm -hmm. and then couldn't really wrap his head around it couldn't perform had to reach out to her word word shout out to some words, but the sound effects when that shit <laughs> yo um, listen after that the niggas got to talk about if you guys are familiar if you're my age you know about an animated movie mm. from back in the 90s called baby's Ru kids yeah that was the shit right there and if you guys remember the film there was a little girl in there ariana star played the little girl what was her name LaShawn. Cause she was doing a rap, remember? Somebody right. loved Baby's Kids. <laughs> so check it out. We was doing the. Oh, I'm sorry. We was in a segment where she was talking a little bit about her experience. Tone Loke was an actor. He played the little baby. Mm -hmm. Pee Wee also. Um, former. What 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 do you call the group? Um, immature. Or IMX, or like what was it? What Listen, was it? that that's a little beyond me. I ain't really. So Marcus Houston, <laughs> this nigga was in a movie as a little nigga. Yeah, because you was calling him Marquise. And um, she talked about her experience working with them, and <laughs> also we got to talking a little bit about like where she wanted to go. She was promoting an event. They were, and they did have that event. They had an event, a lifestyle event in Jamaica, Rome Major and such was there and such. So we got into talking about that. Mm -hmm. And then, yo, his, all right, so for a little bit of background, this is one of the first time when we started getting people to know who, we, this was the second fucking episode. Right. We were brand fucking new. And on the second and episode. had a major so check it out, lifestyle like, porn star. So check this out. When you're dealing with like celebrities and, and shit like this, it's like, I'm not saying like, yo, this is my dude and shit like this. When you're dealing with celebrities and people who are like used to shit at a certain level, they feel like, hey, we can do whatever we can. Right. So we were thinking that, you know, maybe we might just end up wrapping up the show. And then, yo, you know who texts me? <laughs> DJ Fat Man School. The Fat Man School, brother, go ahead. Yo, this nigga texts me and shit. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm downstairs. I'm about to come in. I'm about to come in. I'm like, crazy. All right, yo, and we in the fucking studio. The podcast studio is actually dedicated for people who are serious about doing a podcast. Right. So if you don't know, yo, somebody else who is ready to film this shit, Mm -hmm. They had to wait late. Scoop had to go outside in the hallway and yep. ask the and people who had they, to film they wait? Yes, and they agreed to that. Listen, so. I love that. I love the power when 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 you're able to coerce somebody to hold off so you could do what you got to do. Listen, 
I love that. That's why I'm. That's that's the kind of power I want to be able to have. A little background from episode <laughs> two. When Scoop came in the studio, the engineer that you can't see that's on the mm -hmm. other side of the screen. What we got to understand is that Scoop actually grew up in Harlem, right? And that gentleman, his father, father was actually the landlord in the building that Scoop grew up in. Right. So this dude was also familiar with Scoop. You know, how what crazy? I mean? You can't even make it up. Word. This was also, if you guys remember, this was a little while back so the pandemic was still a little bit fresh and things like that we were talking about a couple of things that we were doing scoop is really into guns and shit scoop is into, scoop is on some survivalist shit so scoop was like yeah man i was playing with you know what i mean he, scoop was on a lot of shit he was on survivalist shit he was on vegan shit he was on a lot of shit and it was just like word yeah and here <laughs> scoop get to interact with ariana star was also right really fun. it was great yeah man y'all didn't even get to see like it was an editing trick when <laughs> yo ariana was like yo Yo, you like my, you like my movies, you like my films. <laughs> Yo, Scoop was like this. He was like, nye, nye, nye. you couldn't even see it because he was like this. He was like this on a can and shit like that. That was a dope ass episode. Yeah. Now, what I would say is this though: episode three, when we're talking about season one, to be honest, to this day, everybody who talks to me, I've said this a few times. We did a whole lot of dope fire shit. For a lot of reasons I'm about to explain, I think that might be the one episode that was my favorite. Know what I'm saying? So, check this out. How that ended up happening. Um, first Who off, was on that third episode? First off, episode three on season one of Tribe Chat, you guys know, featured Heart of Soft. Mm. Now, if you guys remember, if you're Heart of Soft fans, you do remember Heart of Soft originally featured Tahoe, Tahoe and, and Orlando. Orlando Roy, yeah. whom now moved to L.A., who's in a relationship with a female sex-positive podcaster from Good Moms, Bad mm. Choices, Mila, in L.A. Right. Tahoe stayed in Brooklyn and such, and he maintained Heart of Soft. Orlando Roy is doing Menage a Mons podcast. Now. Right. So, check this out. Menage a Mons, that, that's a dope-ass, yeah, go on. <laughs> Orlando, I think, Orlando hit us up, right? So, Orlando was familiar, they are both familiar with, because mm -hmm. we're still at the time relatively new this right. was the third episode Orlando was familiar with what the fuck media studios and I, he reached out to us first hey like yo I'm interested in being on your podcast because they reached out from the heart of soft um, Instagram and mm -hmm. they reached out to us about being on the show that's like, a lot yeah, of, we do a lot of that um, a lot of the people that we get on the show we reach out through um, IG so it's a very good search engine and a networking tool if you don't happen to know so at the time when Orlando hit me up, I was reaching out to Glamour's on Tayomi Morgan. Mm. Now, if you know anything about sex positivity, you're familiar with that name. If you've ever heard of Exotica, you'll know she's the resident sex expert. And if you get into the sex expert corner, this is how you get in through Glamour's on Tayomi. She's been in this game since 2014, and we had a dope ass story when we got on the show. She agreed to be on the show, and then. So did Hard to Soft. Hmm. When we got them both on the show, Tahoe and Glamour's on Tayomi. See, Tahoe was a veteran podcaster. They were on a previous episode of their show before he got into talking about it. Right. They had really, really good chemistry. I appreciated that. Yeah. As a result of that, she um, when she came up to New York, she went into the Hard to Soft show. Mm -hmm. Yo, one thing that um, when we do our segment, this is how we got into structure. We got in a little bit tight into structure and knowing how... We wanted the show to go. So we got into the Habari Ghani segment, gave it a name, and then you see at the bottom of the screen, we had the graphic. That's when we decided how we wanted the graphic to look. Mm -hmm. So at the time, you remember what was going on. Little Nas X had a situation where he was in the news because he had a bootleg version of Nikes with human blood in the air bubble part of the shoe. So we talked about that shit. And... Wait, I feel like there was a couple of other news we bulletins. We talked about a lot of stuff. Nah, there was a couple of other news bulletins that we were supposed to get to. But, yo, we ended up talking about Little Nas X. For the longest. For, like, 25 fucking yeah. minutes. Real shit. Yo, like, matter of fact, in addition to not just Little Nas X we were talking about, we started talking about LGBTQ equity and inequity and social justice and mm -hmm. such. We Yeah, we talked about a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. About why it got a little hot. Yeah, well, we had to jump Pegasus real quick. They tried. Nah, for real. They tried, but I stand my own and I stand ten toes down on what I say. 
in addition to talking about this, we got to talk about, yo, I really did. You can still do this shit. Put the word jizz in YouTube and see what the fuck comes up. Yeah, that shit is the funniest shit ever. Nah, but I got a little tongue tied. What I was saying is a dude had to, um, they had a special erotic film company that specializes in customs and people who are really, really, really rich can order really specific mm-hmm. customs. Dude wanted a specific set of Clarks. The specific set of church yeah. shoes. Now, he knew the brand and the color. Mm. He wanted the specific brand and the color. He wanted them on display. He wanted mannequins. Motherfucking mannequins to come to life and nut on each other. Hmm. Yo, and I watched this shit. This shit was dope. Dude who had a show on Vice. There's a... Um, Vice isn't um, as popular as it is now, but Vice... It used to be. I used to love Vice. Vice had... Um, I forgot what was this. Like, I think it was Weird Jobs or some shit like that. Dude was... His job was shooting fake cum from mannequins. That shit was hilarious. And then at the end of the damn episode... Real shit. I was explaining this to Tahoe, Orlando, and um, Tayoni. How do you get a job? First of all, how do you get a job? Do you go on Indeed to, like, get that kind of fucking job? The, um, we would be knowing this because it depends on like adult jobs and stuff like that. So it's part of the ways where you find them. That's part of how people be getting bookings and shit like that. Yo, but like, homie had to fill the tube up and put it in between the mannequin's legs. Right. And it shot fake looking, it was fake cum inside of the damn church shoes. And we had, to, you know, they had to zoom in on the church shoes when she put her foot in and then the cum just Smooth oozed out. out and shit. <laughs> yo, Tayomi was like, my foot just cringed. <laughs> and then, yo, niggas was talking about how niggas accidentally, yo, later on. Had stepped in, come and all of that. No, niggas accidentally licked period off. blood. You guys got to go on that episode. Like, yo. Yes, wow. Yo, niggas I can't. I, I don't even want to get in damn. Oh, listen. I don't want yo, my socks wet. Niggas that was is talking crazy. about Yo, we was talking about, yo, somebody on there. Fuck. Like, yo, there is a twin and twin sisters was fucking the same partner we got into talking about that wow because tayomi's a twin yes and also it meant something special to me because that was the last um one of the last public appearances that they made when the original heart of soul was still right shout out to them after that um when it comes to episode four were you on episode four i may have i may have not been i don't who, who was on episode four i think episode four was um yeah Episode four, I feel like that, that was on? No, that was Mistress Majesty. Mistress Majesty, the fun sexual podcast. Okay, yes, I was there. Yes, Mistress Majesty. <laughs> she was living in Jersey. She's from mm-hmm. Jersey. She's in Philly right now. She got an event coming up, so she came in because at the time she recently was on horrible decisions. We mm-hmm. were following each other and shit. Right at the time, what was um, circulating on the internet was like she was talking about. How, like yo niggas talking about how it's dangerous to lick ass like cause we talk about that and they had a clip where she was talking about how she almost got pink eye from yeah ass. we was talking about that I know of quite a few people who've contracted some really interesting things from licking ass y'all got to be careful it's this way it's, look she didn't get pink eye from licking ass no she didn't but you could she didn't get pink out from looking ass, but also um, we got to talk about her experience with play parties and such like that. And this was really, really fun because that episode, we did edibles. Pegasus and I, I got some edibles from Jamaica Ave. We were drinking edibles and we had edible chips. So that shit was fun. like, yo, we was getting super high. I, some people's tolerance is higher than others. <laughs> Edibles don't really do much for me except put me down, but you know. It felt good. Listen, yeah, of course. High is always good. I know, um, in addition to that, you know what I'm saying, we had a uh, much more serious or a little bit more of a serious tone of an episode. One of the things that we talk about is providing like a safe space for people mm-hmm. in the community of color, black people. I actually wanted to focus black on black and brown. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to the representation and the spaces for people who look like us who want to explore this this sexuality safely, right? So check it out. Um, I was at a party 
And then, you know, it's a party full of people who look like us. We're chilling and such. When the party was almost over, one name that came up, they was like, you heard of Max Styles? So I heard that <laughs> name. I was like, I did some research and stuff, and stuff like this. So, yo, Max Styles is actually progressing in the field of sexuality. He didn't even have the logo and such yet. But he was just promoting parties and such. Shout out, man. And he has, yo, Max Styles, he designs his own sex toys, right? And he has a book, Sex, Chicken, and Cocoa Butter. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit of skimming through that. Baby, that like, shit is funny. While, like how he was dealing with relationships before he got into the community and shit like this. And it was some pretty funny shit. Yeah, right? I know. <laughs> what got me into um, inviting him on the show, Max Styles, of course, is a white man. And He's not, of course. They don't know. You got to tell him that. That's yeah. my favorite white black boy. <laughs> yeah, Max Styles, yeah, Max Styles is a white man. Right, and typically his community of um, promotion of events or people of color. Right, right? his so, wife is Brazilian or something. I think I met her on the nude beach. So, Beautiful. Like, what, what he was saying is that when he wrote the book, all right. So that was in between, like after the book, before this wife was a black woman that he was married. Right, so he was saying. So, all right. Now, when in talking to that. A real good friend of mine, I haven't gotten this spoken to, my homie was on the show, Ace Rouge Noir. That's who she, we call the pain lady. So ever, all right, so ever since this episode, Another beautiful one. we kept going to this. This is why we kept talking about this specific thing. We started talking about sounding. So, yo, Rouge Noir, she was a black woman who specializes she is in, a black woman she is of course <laughs> she specializes specifically in bds and performances mm -hmm. and such and she has a show called black girl loss where the person who made a, a very big impact on how i look at things politically social politically feminista jones also was on the show the show was about finding lost black girls mm. so with her social political views and how i got to know her what I wanted to do was to get a more balanced conversation about the effect of racialized imagery and how the politics of sexuality needs to be addressed when we talk about like things like, you know, interracial fetishism and things like that. And the way that parties are promoted. That was another heated conversation. And like, <laughs> the way that parties are promoted. Like, as we talked about shit like swirl parties and right. stuff like that. So, th like, yo, is swirl parties appropriate? And Queen of Spades and all of those different, you know, um, fetishes that circle around color or hue, you know. Yeah, and I got to get to talk into more uh, about the book and more about this real blood-based shit that Ruth hmm. War is into when it comes to her sexual Baby. abuse. Definitely check out that episode. She, she, you know what? And shout out to Ruth Noir for pushing the envelope because. Um, the reason why our space is mostly bl predominantly black and brown specifically for us is to allow us to be able to maneuver safely and openly amongst our own without any extra from any place else, you know. So um, typically what she does is not a thing that well, it's not something that I found us do a lot in play parties so i appreciate her for pushing the envelope because even though you don't see it a lot it doesn't mean that it's not something that may be prevalent very soon Yo, so i appreciate you watch that the episode she opened that up. on the episode we were talking about how something is considered white people shit and Ruth right. Noir said that i was introduced to this through black people right so when i got into this i was like oh white people do this shit yo her perspective was so dope and i was so refreshed to hear that shit and, and to great. hear so much that she got to experience thinking of this as traditionally a black thing. Well, she got to know so much. Like I'm like, oh, I gotta fuck with you. Thinking of this as her introduction of kink and sex positivity was black people. That's that, dope. That was the um viewpoint that I wanted that I was missing for so long. After that, um, we had a Mother's Day episode. I Hold on one second, y'all gotta. Old girl had fangs. I need to say that she had. Yeah, at the end of the episode. Fucking fangs, B. Because you, um, you guys, what you should do is... Ah, she's a vampire, B. If you're watching this, you need to look up what fluid bonding mm. is. So when you're exploring your kink and sexuality, there's ways in which people explore. And mm -hmm. like there's ways that they define their boundaries and stuff like that. So like y'all need to see fluid bonding. Fluid bonding that is, is very like when interesting. You're, when you're dealing with a certain types of play where you're going to come in contact with certain types of fluids, people, they talk about that in advance to set up boundaries so that they yeah. know what that's like and sometimes 
just like it could be any type of fluids. Those type of fluids could range from spit to urine, urine. to even blood. And yeah, with, and, and and in Rouge Noir's case, it was blood. So but like, blood can be from anywhere. It can she can. You know, like I said, she got fangs. She might bite you. It might be period blood. It might be anything. So those are the different levels of you know play when you when you're experiencing wet play or look what up we call fluid, fluid bonding. Fluid bonding. Look up right. fluid bonding. Definitely look up that. What I was what I was saying is this. After that, I had a Mother's Day episode. I couldn't get up with Pegasus for that, right? But yo, it was Mother's Day. Check it out. So on that episode, there's a couple that we had, and then we also had a friend of mine out here. Kinks with Kiki. I was a friend of her and a um, fan of her podcast. Kiki identifies as a professional submissive, mm. right? She's a professional sub. And then um, she also is originally from North Carolina. So DV Passion, they're a couple from Brooklyn who move to Atlanta. And all about body positivity. Um, body positivity. Uh, the woman in there, the beautiful Miss D, is a beautiful melanated BBW woman, adult film creator who hosts lifestyle events, and her specialty is face sitting. She teaches how she can smother you with her ass. That's the pro with me. That's the sub or the dom. That is actually the couple. Okay, so yeah, we got it. All right, that's the couple, and the female of the couple is. D. Right. So, what we got to, yo, I talked about a lot of things there. One of the things that the theme, since it was a Mother's Day episode, the first question that I asked them, because they're parents, how are right. they able, they're public people, how are they able to navigate the community and navigate what they want to do without having to worry about exposing their children too much? They got into talking about that. Or getting, that. Or, or getting them, you know, like, like, because a lot of us in LS, we have LS or um, pro for that matter we all have um, children you know and me for instance I have older children and sons so it's a little tricky navigating that and you know there may be people who are apprehensive about stepping into um, this lifestyle for fear that their children might be traumatized some some way somehow my daughter's and, grown grown she's and, not a little kid yeah, she's well, about to be a woman shit well my, my, my I got a grown son and well you know I don't know because I'm not a man and I don't have daughters, but I think it might be a little different for sons and mothers than it is for fathers and daughters only because so many things are acceptable for men to do that are not you. And this is one of the reasons why I venture into me personally venture into LS because Look of the that. freedom. Because you know what? I'm going to ask somebody who is going to come on the show in season three. That person is. You'll figure out in season three, and I won't even let Pegasus know who it is. I listen, but I know Pegasus will be pleased that we were finally able to get this person on the show. Right, but I got some people I want to because I want to talk about that too. Like it's a, it's people that are bigger than us, and listen, I and. Yeah, I want to be able to talk about that too because that might be something that hinders people from coming into the life. I already said that, but I want to say it again for those of you who are listening who may be apprehensive about stepping into this. It's ways to do it. It's not even about what you do; it's how you do it. And like what I wanted to say is, you were close. What I wanted to say is, um, after that, right? Like you were talking about bigger than us, right? So after that, like I was looking up a few people. Part of the voices that we want to make sure that we empower. Like I don't talk too much to just my homies that just be here like hey yo that's my opinion you know what i mean i want to make sure that my time that i use is you know what i mean valuable and that your time consuming our product is valuable right. so we talk to a woman yo i'm here in new york and you guys are familiar with the prestigious school nyu right so yo check it out i'm just on ted talk so i even looked up like casual sex and, sh and this woman popped up like when you look up casual sex on youtube so a uh, slim white woman with glasses comes mm. up, right? Her name is Dr. So unsuspecting. Dr. Jana from Galava is a slim white woman with a bunch of tattoos and shit. And That's a mouthful. Yeah. Say it again. Say it again. It's Dr. Jana. Jana from Galava. Van Galava. So I talked to her first, and she was talking about, I was like, yo, you want to come to the show? She's like, I think about it. <laughs> and then she was like, yeah, sure. Why not? Yo, listen, we got to talk about so much shit. So I love there's a those course. Talks called open love smarter using science and psychology to determine if you aren't into monogamy how you can explore monogamy using science and psychology mm. she is a licensed psychologist and she teaches at nyu and we got her on the show to talk Dope about interview. 
a few things, giving us the perspective of not a physician, not a physician, but a, a, a professional from a psychologist. Yeah. And yo, know, I got to learn a bunch of shit. You know, there's a study called the Harambert study in 1997. They they did a survey on who wants to have threesomes in 1997, man. Hmm. This shit was this shit was fire. I bet you it wasn't honest. It, it, and it probably was fire. I wasn't there for it, but I bet you it wasn't honest. I, you know, it might have been more honest nowadays because it's a little bit more open. People would make the argument that it could be not honest nowadays because there was no concept of viral in 1997. It's a there was no internet in 1997. There was no, like, nobody was like, oh, I'm going to say some bullshit because I'm going to put my Instagram at the end of the story. Well, that would happen now. Well, that would happen what, I'm what, I, what, what I'm just saying is the people in the study again i already said i wasn't there so i don't know yeah. but i'm just thinking about the time period and you know the mindset then you know it's it's a little broad now it's still closed but it's a little broad now i only say that because in 97 we're talking about almost yeah a long time ago so you know people probably were thinking about it and want to look around and go well who want to admit to it who want to admit to it all right well i fuck with them i ain't gonna say shit you know in addition to that yo like one of my, another one of my favorite clips right because like yo i was like <laughs> i was like yo at the if you guys are familiar with our show how we end our show is i typically ask like when you're at the end of the show i'd be like yo seriously do you eat ass? <laughs> Yo, I be getting everybody with that shit. Like, y'all see I watch the show? Get... We kind of need a new question, though, because if so, you watch the show... Dr. Jana from the I know that. She was like, I love eating ass. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, um, also, the last question that we asked... You guys, if you want her eyes know, look a little pink in the glass. No, she did. No, they did. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, um, we asked everybody about whom their favorite uh, celebrities that they would like. Like to the top five. Like, is it top five? It's the fantasy four fuck list. Fantasy four fuck list. All right, and yo, yeah, my we were talking Marie. about a few people. That's she was that saying, old shit. I'm reading books. I don't follow her around, but you know who came up? Yo, we started talking about Dennis Rodman. It's nothing more interesting than hearing a professor and a psychologist talking about how bad they want to fuck Dennis it's Rodman. No, it's no, Anybody wanting to fuck Dennis Rodman is interesting. You want to know what part of them turn, what part of him turns you on sexually? Not that there's anything, no, no, no disrespect to Dennis Rodman. I'm just saying there's so much going on. That person is somebody I want to speak to. The person that wants to fuck Dennis Rodman is an interesting individual. I, I, I need to sit down and chit chat with them, but we already did that. You can see it on the <laughs> on the episode where she was at. All right, so I know also from then on, at some point, one of the conversations that we ended up having, Pegasus and I, we host events in addition to this, and also we got into taking adult in adult entertainment much more seriously. And such. Right, content so, creating. So in addition to us hosting events ourselves, we also were patronizing Southern um, other people's events. And we ended up in Atlanta twice. Twice. You know what I'm saying? Two the, times. The first time me and also, hold up, here's some background. I never got this. I don't even know if I explained this to you, right? So um, we went to Atlanta twice. First, all right, the first time we went to go see my homie Mimi G., Right. Second time we went to Sack House, and we're gonna explain the event that the, we went to. Right? Was that? Um, That's when Kink stopped. Kink stopped. Right. I swear to God, this old age shit is crazy. I can't remember nothing. It was a dope event. Peggy sister, did I ever tell you that those two women hate each other? Like they nah, hate each other. Nah, I, no. Me, but, me and Royal knew that shit. We forgot to tell you. Mm, like, don't even bring their names. It, up. I, I and I didn't. I probably couldn't have remembered it. <laughs> no, they really hate each next. other. And that's unfortunate. No, like they took each other to court. It's like, unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, anyway. Yeah, let's not focus on that because this is all about good. No, nah, I'm gonna get into that in a second. Oh, Look, check Lord. this out. Listen, when we went, we went to go to um see Mimi G. That's a collaboration with a couple of events, a couple of people. That's when I got to meet my own um, Sunshine Aces. She actually dropped us back off at the hotel. Thank you, Sunshine. <laughs> and then we ran into. Well, she was I ran into she her ass clothes. on the. No, she didn't. She just had a little black she had a, thing she had a robe. on. She had Something, a robe on. right, she right. And then I caught her ass on Gunnison Beach. She had her titties out. Them beautiful light skin titties. She, she had, had them titties out, but she had this little rainbow thing around her. She was so beautiful. <laughs> 
right, now the second time, so check this out. What we were doing was we were promoting an event. That was a dungeon party, by the way. I'm sorry. That mm -hmm. shit was dope as fuck. If you are a lifestyler, if you are anything in sex party, get out and move around because where you are is not the only place. Like, in different places, the vibe is different. That was a dope-ass party. I've been to dungeon parties here, but that was very fucking different. And yeah. I'm not saying better or worse. It was just different. And you appreciate it. It was dope. Shout right. out Sunshine Right You know what I'm saying That was actually fire Speaking of going to different places Also in addition We talked to a friend of ours A recurring friend Dana Queen of Hearts She's located in Indianapolis So she specializes in hotel takeovers mm. Specifically in Indianapolis For black people So she did a rebrand First her company was called Your Own Element Now it's called Fuckcation So in addition to Selling out the hotel takeovers. That's if you, dope. If you go to her, she'll give you information about how you can design your flyers properly and things like that. And I'm just saying, man, I'm coming. Yo, like this is something that when I first got on with this organization, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I dealt with is like the promotion, like bullshit promotion. Is going to set a precedent of not being able to take your fucking self seriously. If you guys want me to spend money to patronize your event, don't be on some bullshit. Like, you can't spend the five dollars for a flyer? You can't, like, come on with the bullshit. Like, oh, no, nah, I'm gonna just download the thing from Instagram story and this, but I do want Cut you to give me a hundred dollars. Like, come with the bullshit, man. If you guys are too fucking cheap. To get a good ass flyer, like why am I thinking I'm going to get a good experience? Right. That's the first impression that you made. Yeah, absolutely. Stop with these bullshit ass flyers, man. If you want me to spend money to come to your shit, invest. Let me know that you're taking your damn well, business seriously. I'm gonna just say this: everybody is where they are, but if you have it, if you ha then you you gotta upgrade because we started in a space where it wasn't so I'm great not at one point with somebody in time. Who ain't trying to spend five fucking dollars. No, I'm not. I'm well, just saying. Like, I mean, you don't want to spend own, five dollars to like, each his own. Everybody don't if charge this isn't five your dollars. Trade, B. If this isn't your trade, if this isn't your craft that you mastered in graphic design, yo, bro, like ten dollars, you can just go on Fiverr. Like, don't be cheap. Like, you know what I'm saying? And you're trying to make money, so she actually gives you instruction if you want to go that route. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do this yourself, you can get the skill set to actually do this properly and such. There's a couple of things that you guys notice when we promote, you know what I'm saying, if I have to say it out loud. One of the things with this organization, since I came up in here, uh, number one, of course, we are promoting exclusively to people of color. We typically always have black people on our flyers. Number right. two, um, and they're body positive, out. yeah. <laughs> also, if you have figured out and such like this, this is one thing that we've been real adamant about. And I'm glad that like other people have figured this shit out mm -hmm. too. Um, we don't put, respectfully, we don't put people on our flyers that have nothing to do with the fucking event. Um, I know that like people want to make this impression where it's like, oh, yo, look, man, it's just a theme. It's just like, don't take it too literally. And so, if this adult film star is not going to be at the party, don't put on the flyer. We are not putting her on. Let me tell flyer. you something. We even got Ariana Star to come out to an event. She wasn't on the flyer, but her ass was there. I and put on the flyer. Oh. I don't even look at the memory. Are we on the but her ass was and there, her and a man, and we had a great time. Tinder Montana came out and showed some absolutely. Love. Shout out for, I saw yep. her at the beach and such like this. You know what I'm saying? The reason why we do that is because one, I feel like it's a little bit whack when it's like, yo, like I know Megan Thee Stallion is not going to be at this lifestyle event. But <laughs> in addition to that, it's like this. Whenever the side effect that we had to doing that is that whenever we put a person on our flyer people take it literally yes so they take us seriously because they know what the if it's on there the brand, they know oh this person has to it's be gonna there. be there they're not gonna put that person on the flyer just who's for, not yeah just, just for the promotion just for fuck's sake you know what i'm saying when we had dana queen of hearts on the show she got to lay into some of her experience but unfortunately she had to leave so then we got to talking amongst ourselves you know what I'm saying? Which is also a hundred percent spontaneity a uh, situation spontaneity. that we didn't even plan for that just happened and people seem to respond well. That's to the best way to me. I'm a, yeah, I that's I like it like that. You know, I, I like the spontaneity. That that's how you get the real. I I oftentimes tell people I like to walk past open windows and 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 shit with no curtains because I want to look in and see what the people doing when they don't know you watching. That's how you get the most organic something. You know. After that, and that's this what it's is, all about. 
after that, this is how I actually got to met this gentleman. So I was um, listening to, uh, wow, man. Oh, you getting old too? Huh? I gotta no, I gotta I gotta unpack this because what I'm saying is actually Bama put me on to Brian. Mm. So you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll get to that in a few. But um, I another podcaster whom I was whom. Pegasus and I were really close with. That's when I get to be exposed to this gentleman. Blacktouch.com. Mm. This gentleman has a slogan. I love it. I love it. He says, We specialize in high quality without reducing us to fetishized versions of ourselves. All of the people in blacktouch.com, yo, go to blacktouch.com if you want to jerk off. I'm telling you, huh. listen, it's all black people, it's all high quality, and they are treated like entire people. People, right. That is so fire. They are all storyline. And let me tell you something. Listen, you're not just sitting there. Like, Waiting for the dun 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 dun. A lot of people turn on in this like, fucking. Yo, King Noah has filmed there. Yo, Shout out to King um, Noah. We need to get Bro. your ass on here. Dioso didn't films with them recently. Nice. Um, Black Rose films with them recently. Um, a lot of people. And if That's you are I'm watching not. and you're in the adult industry, if you are a black person, I think what we got to understand is that like this is like the black adult film creators. This is like everybody has to work with him once. <laughs> we, everybody has to work with Brian <laughs> so, once. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's an important thing that he got to um, talk to us. He came on our show. Um, before we got on to talk to um, Brian, we got to talk specifically about adult industry related stuff. And um, I got to talk to another friend of ours that we met. So um, at the time, there was an election in New York and Eliza Orleans, she's a district attorney. She was running for lead district attorney. And we got to meet, yo, we have a union for adult film stars. Adult film stars, yeah. It's called the APAG, Adult Performance Actors Guild. So we talked to the boss in um, Central Park. You know what I'm saying? I, I know her. So Alana. That was Central Park or, or Washington Square Park. Park? That was Washington Square. Washington Square. Washington Square Park. Alana was in Washington Square Park. and That was Pride? It was getting close to it. That was okay. for the... We were campaigning for Eliza. Okay. All right. So we played that clip. Then we got to talk to Brian a little bit. And then we got to understand a lot about how representation, as well as the activism in adult industry, it's is important. quintessential to making sure that and we paramount. have an industry in which 34 fucking percent of all internet activity, 34 percent of anything that goes on the internet is related to sex. So this is why we're working on making sure that the advocacy and the voices who have something to say about the advocacy is important. So what we did... And our representation. Yes. <laughs> well, the advocacy is the represent. I get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I do remember from then um, when we got into the season finale, right? The season finale was funny as a motherfucker, right? Because like, yo, like we was in, because we have our own group chat. And like uh, one of the things that came up in a Shout group out to NK Swingers. So like they posted this, um, this shit was funny as hell. It was like a fake conversation about like, when somebody comes by to try to fuck and they change their mind so there was a conversation about that of course the person on the receiving end was the is the young lady like typically i mean it could be the other way but typically it's just a young lady <laughs> you know what i'm saying anyway no it's not real it was a joke but pegasus and i got to act <laughs> that shit out right and then we got to talk about the depths and nuances of consent. And then we got to talk a little bit. This was the first time we got to visit the conversation about racial fetishism and queen of spades, right? Yo, I talked to somebody from Canada. You know, we're on a podcast platform called Full Swap Radio. We share with a lot of other sex positive podcasters, right? Shout out Full Swap. So one of the people on Full Swap Radio, a white woman... Venus cuckoldress. So, this white woman, she specializes in racial fetishism. She calls herself a queen of spades. Mm. And she was, I actually even talked to her, you know, on IG about her intentions and how that is important to consider when we're looking at her for using that racialized language. You know what I'm saying? So, we ended up coming back to that conversation. After that, we got into season two. We got to reflect and such like that. And in season two, 
I want to say we we went through some personal changes and things like that, right? And um, notice when let me, let me just say this: if and when he mentions the episode and I say nothing, just go and watch the damn episode. <laughs> just go and watch the episode. <laughs> But yes, we did go through. We're constantly going through personal changes. Um, I think that's one of those things that um, makes it makes LS so LS lifestyle for those of you who may be watching and not familiar with the terminology. But that's one of those things that make LS so um, important for me, just because you get to be a different kind of honest and a kind of naked that you not necessarily in your vanilla life. Like everybody thinks this is so much more difficult. Um, and I guess for some people it would be, but for somebody who is ensconced in it, like myself and Omari, it's, it's rather easy. It's rather easy because of the honesty and, you know, the ability to be naked and vulnerable with your in your circle you know what I mean now in your vanilla life you deal with absolutely everybody so you cannot you sometimes have to walk out with a mask when we're in LS we're in our particular in our particular group we family so you know it's a little bit more um, open and I love that I love can, do you know what it is to be able to, 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 to be with your significant other and really be able to explore all their fetishes without any judgment? Could you imagine what your life is going to be like now? Baby, you're going to have the kind of peace that the people that are around you in vanilla lives don't have. You know, you don't necessarily have to sit outside of your car to get your, uh, your 20 minutes of wusa before you go in this house because you don't got no real way to, to release. I mean, we still have stresses, but, you know... Speaking this is a of great thing. Personal changes and such like this. So, if you guys know, there are a few real fans. If we haven't laid out everything, you know what I mean. Like I talk about, like um, whose contribution to what and such like this. Like I said, I actually wasn't. I mean, originally I came here in this position, just similar to Enzori Kabila. Like originally, I wasn't originally the boss of the show. You know what I'm saying? So the creator of the show, you the boss now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I, sue me. I didn't know. Well, the creator who designed the show, the original producer, you know what I'm saying? We, in season two... He the boss. We had... She had a, a protege whom she was working with to help because what happened is we was having a technical issue. So the protege was helping her with a lot of the production issues and such like this. Whom is hey, yo? That's the same person that everybody used for the fucking flyers. Who's the same person everybody used for the flyer? Everybody's using BUX. The person that designed the entire season two. Oh no no no! I didn't. I, I baby, I got stuck somewhere. Don't don't pay me no attention. I'm back. <laughs> well, I'm gonna shout out to BUX Graphics. Also, if you guys want to know one quintessential change in season two, that's when we introduced the closing segment. This is when we got to do more research and such. And what I got to understand, and this is one simple thing, people love to laugh, especially at people. Yeah, and so other things. it helps when you're funny. Right? So, yo, um, what I do get to understand is um, there's a lot of time and energy vested in... A lot of people who have platforms that say a lot of shit that takes us backwards from progression. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people talking about, like, we spend a lot of time angry about people who be like, you know what? Females, this, all of that type of shit, right? So if you guys, um, I'm going to simplify it like this. Let me make this real simple, okay? Guys like that, is for, I'm going to check in the balance. People like that. Well, people like this. Yeah. Like, my, I feel like my whole job is to kick your ass. Seriously. Like, that's why I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Nothing gives me much more pleasure than to put a boot in your counter-progressive ass. You know well, I'm going to let you be the boss of that because that ain't, that ain't my job. Which is why we have a <laughs> brand new segment on season two called You Are two or three. Idiot. Oh, uh, Yes. Dedicated to, an highlight, idiot. to highlighting the brilliance of people saying stupidness. So at the end of all of the shows in season two, you can scroll to the last ten minutes. That was fire. Um, the season two kicked off with shout out to Hef. Hef 
If you guys are familiar with BDSM, you'll know about the Hef lifestyle. Mm. You'll know about the Daddy Hef, the um, pink pussy pills, vagina vitamin, and the God Dick pill. Ooh. This is a male enhancement pill that keeps you hard with all natural herbal supplements. Yo, we got to talk about that. We got to talk about the proper way to spank a ass. Mm. Yo, um, Hef even you know got that. You know how I do that. Hef does it like. <laughs> Hef does it Like you know what I'm saying Like that's not even like yo, BDSM and like Impact That's not my thing But Hef like he does it Does yeah. it Yeah It's like a circular motion We talked mm -hmm. about that and shit It's my thing though Yes That was fire You know what I'm saying mm. Um. Also in season two Yo One of my Bring the beat back One of my, Another one of my favorite episodes We gotta talk about Alright so Here's how this happened So if you guys are around my age, you're familiar with a magazine called, or a magazine publication called Blacktail. So, what we got to understand is that that is designed by a black woman. All right? An adult film creator, black porn star, Ms. Dynamite, right? That's what we've seen on the boat. That's right. Yeah, let me tell you something. That is so fucking important and so key, but so fucking slick. Do you think they would have been received the same way if we knew back then that it was a black woman's publication? You know, it was like the 80s and 90s. People were so, I guess they would make the argument that it wouldn't matter because everybody was so busy jerking off. Not, well, you know, that might be the case, but I'm just saying the powers that be who put the ideas in everybody's head, who eats them up like little fucking, you know, fruity pebbles and shit. Because we, let's be honest, most people do not have their own ideas and their own mindset. So my question is, do you think it would have been as popular as it was if we thought that it was a woman? Because I don't know that it was said that it was a man, but I know I automatically assumed that it was a male publication, largely in part because it was pointed in the 80s, women just did not come out, the black women just come out and, and yeah, we didn't, that wasn't, that wasn't a prevalent thing. Trailblazer, right? Mm. So. What I was explaining, right, um, like on a boat Perfect ride, word. right? So check this out. Here's how it happened. So she's available. Miss Dynamite is available till this day. You know, you guys should check out her content and also hit her up, man, for the one of a kind Miss Dynamite experience. You definitely would. Now, what's that? Because I ain't get to hear what the one of a kind. Do you know what it is? Or are you just telling them to go and find out? Well, I would tell them that they should hit her up and okay. talk to her about mm -hmm. the in-person experience that she may be able to offer people who are vetted. You know what I'm saying? Vetted. You, they, they. We going to start doing that shit. We haven't done an event in a, in all year, honestly. You know, um, we've, you know, hosted other people's events and, you know, took footage and done, you know, shows. But we haven't really um, hosted an uh, uh, in-house event this year. I didn't even do the birthday party. But I'm only, I make mention of that to say that maybe we should take our vetting um our vetting process a little bit more serious all of this is about progression y'all you know what i mean we're this is for for me this is a un well i mean it's a little bit open now but at the time when myself and my cousin started in missouri kabila um it was something unprecedented we i had never known there to be black swingers number one and then groups of us close to us in the tri-state area in jersey that was something very very un unprecedented and new so you know our our thing was a baby but you know so what i'm saying to you now is that maybe we should start doing that a little bit more seriously because as i grow into this i'm finding that i prefer smaller parties let me you know um, what i mean with with people that let me explain yeah. how this um, how this episode came up, right? So which episode are we talking about? We still I, talking about the same one? Hold on. So check this check this out, right? Um, I still don't know. Now you're gonna know what episode I'm talking about okay. when I get to unpack this real quick. I was talking on the phone with trying to get in. I was actually trying to get in touch with Miss Dynamite. So I called her on her phone and go through the booking process to get her on the phone. And I call her. I don't want to pick up the phone. And I'm like, yeah, 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 such and such, I'm trying to talk to Miss Dynamite. So immediately her instinct kicks in and, oh, yeah, well, such and such, well, she's not available. What's good? So were you trying to, you know what? I got to understand immediately it wasn't Miss Dynamite. It was somebody else. And the person 
understood, okay, well, this is a client potentially. Potentially. So, look, oh, well, I'm. Somebody wanting to do some business. So, yo, look, well, I'm so and so. You know what I mean? Well, she's not here, but yo, have you heard of me? Blah, blah, blah. So, this is what happened. I got to let her know that we're doing media and we wanted Miss Dynamite to come on the platform to highlight our story. So, in talking about that, now to this day, you know what I'm saying? Now, this is cool. She understood that. So, when I thought about it, I knew that I wasn't talking to Miss Dynamite and I was hearing a little bit about of who the story, I'm sorry, I was hearing a little bit about who I was talking to and I was hearing a little bit about her story. I was like, hmm, I thought she's only temporarily in town. Let's get to Miss Dynamite, but let's talk to this woman. Right. Put it in the bag. So I heard her story. So I said, okay, so can you come to the studio on Sundays? We film on Sundays. She said, yes. Right? Now, I'm going to say this. I don't give a fuck. We talk about a whole bunch of things. Even for people who talk and do media in a sex positive space, one thing that Tribe Chat is known is for leaning really heavily into the space of giving people free range to express their thoughts. Right. I don't censor any of the guests, and I don't typically censor myself. So even for us, this out of all of the shows that we did was the most controversial episode ever, right? So this beautiful woman happened to be the protege of, well, let's say now infamous adult entertainer, Ron Jeremy, right? So we had Ron Jeremy's protege. Her name is Lady Perry. Shout out Lady Perry. So, she Lady Perry came. Up. Lady Perry come on the show. The first thing that she talks about is Lady Perry. I got to understand what is she's an adult entertainer, and she's just you know a uh, a woman. She a person. That, yeah, she's a woman that ages. And here's the thing: what you? She's a woman that what? One more time. She's a woman that ages like everybody else. So. Okay. What happens is the same thing that everybody else is like, yo, we looked younger in your 20, like, like everybody. So she being an adult performer under the, you know what I'm saying, pressure for us to really make money monetizing your physical appearance like everybody else. You know, she does what she does and gets a lot of work done. Right. So like, yo, Lady Paris is country, country. She is. So first thing that she talks about is. They're some beautiful people, though. First thing that she talks about is she gets into a dispute. Facebook didn't have any other competitors and such and such and such like this. Somebody, I guess how it happened, must have commented about thinking that Lady Paris was a man. Yes, was actually assigned male at birth. So if you want to know, just for clarity, no, Lady Paris was not. Lady Paris is actually assigned female at birth. Lady Paris does not identify as trans. And Lady Paris definitely as a vagina. Lady Paris definitely identifies as, as female. You know what I'm saying? Assigned at birth. Okay. And um, she got into a big dispute with because this was, it got a lot of attraction. Yeah. A lot of the comments about her being trans were on Facebook. So she got into the dispute with Mark Zuckerberg himself. Hmm. So she was talking about. Sue Facebook. So we got into talking about that, right? Then also, in addition to that, Ron Jeremy was going through a couple of things with his court case. And this was when he still had, and he's not doing too well right now, you know what I'm saying? When he was still going through the, the shit of his court case, Ron, um, Lady Paris talked about her experience working with him, getting in the industry. And she sang his praises. But hold on, just shout out to a black woman taking on fucking big business. Whether she won the case or not, because unfortunately she did, she lost her uh, lawsuit to him, but she did win a lawsuit. Um, shout out to you taking on big business and not getting fucked for free. You know what I mean? Shout out to you for that, Lady Perry. All right. So that, in addition to that, one of the things that, like, yo, that made the episode. So Lady Perry told us about an incident this is one of the reasons why i had her on the show lady Perry told us about an incident when she was booked to work in a strip club i can't remember where it was it was somewhere in the south 
Um, I think it might have been Tennessee or, 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 or Texas or something like that. The point is, when Lady Paris was booked to perform, mm-hmm. she was a feature performer. She performed, she danced there in the South. It's really, really country. It wasn't in a major city. Where it was located was... It more, wasn't the pank. It was more obscure. <laughs> so, it being in the South, in the time frame, this was a while ago... Even though like things still go down today, this is a while ago. I'm led to believe this had to be late 80s or early 90s. So it had to be like 89 to 92 that we're talking about. And who come to the strip club, the Ku Klux Klan come to the strip club. The Ku Klux Klan, according to Lady Paris, threatened the strip club with her being the feature performer there. And to make... The Ku Klux Klan leave the strip club. Lady Paris had to do the gangbang with the Ku Klux Klan. What made this controversial was such that she discussed this and such. There's layers to this, and we get to understand this. Lady Paris sharing her 100% authentic story. I want to say something about this. I made a joke about that, and I want to say this. I regret that. You know what I'm saying? If I can say this, I will say, one, I would never have made a joke about that. To be clear, the shit is not funny. It's not. It's not. We do understand what happened to Lady Paris was a sexual assault. It was not a consensual sexual act. She was threatened, and that is not funny. But when we did talk about the story with Lady Paris, she did reflect on how she dealt with the situation, and in spite of that, where she was at the moment. So we was definitely happy with Lady Paris, for sharing that story with us and there's a lot of and it was important that she did share that because think about it how many times has this happened to women and they haven't said anything because they're in the sex industry and get shamed into believing well this is what you do this is what you ask for you know what i mean um again shout out to lady Paris. i'm just so full of shout outs today but i'm i love my people again like i said you know what i'm saying um I didn't, and the clip is still there in the YouTube in its entirety. Shit, that's it's just like this. Be. But like I said, you know what I mean? And in, in this industry and in this, um, working in this field of work, you know, we don't necessarily have the right to take all the time being human beings and such. Like I said, I would never have made a joke about that if I had another time to do that interview again. But just to be clear, that shit isn't funny. Sexual assault isn't funny. Pegasus and I do not think that any sexual assault is funny. Absolutely and we not. take all allegations of sexual assault seriously. against all human beings seriously. And this is always a safe space for everybody to share the experience. And it's not even just, um, we're talking about a woman now specifically, but it's not just, um, that's not just isolated to women. Men um, experience sexual assault as well, you know, Um, and what what is so very fucking ludicrous about it is that collectively these men hate black women, but collectively they were all able to fucking perform. They were able to get hard to find some kind of something about her to be able to want to stick their dick, stick your person, your your tool into another human being that you like the ancestors hate so bad. And this is this is one of those reasons why our like the space original black is people all came to this country. black and brown. That's that's exactly why our space is what it is so we can move in the parameters of that because you know, let's just be honest, for some rape fantasy is a fetish for a lot of us, but we should be able to be able to Move, move in that, and it stay fantasy. It should never ever be a traumatic situation. So, I mean, I hate to um take her off, but moving from that. So, like the episode that we ended up um from there, right? So, on a this seems to be a big gesticulation, but on a lighter note, right? <laughs> so, um, I ended up running into like yo, we had this problem when you have sex parties or when you have to create the environment. Of, okay, so we're here. Hey, that little moment, you know, before the sex happens and such, when everybody gets in here, what do we talk is about? That before the sex, or is that courting? No, like, like what's that? What do we talk about? Um, how do I get to know you? How do I get to know you in a way that's sexy? That's gonna lead to that, like you know, what I'm like all of that type of shit, right? So yo, check this out, real shit. This is what we do, right? So this is how I found him, right? This is how I found JP. 
So, like, I get to look into, like, I, I looked into a lot of, like, I watched a lot of the Triple X Playground videos. And, like, I get to, like, I watched what the game was and such. And then, JP is real cool. I was talking mm-hmm. to him on IG. So, um, JP, I talked to him and such. JP sent me the game. And I got to fuck with it. I even used it in a couple of my scenes. You should, guys should check th- those out. And Giselle Lane, Triple X, was even in one of those. Um, check it out. He said, yeah, man, I will come on the show, right? Now, also, I've been to an event one time. I I had to go do something. I walked to somebody else's event, and there was somebody hosting. The person who owned the property, it was this uh, real, beautiful, naturalistic, earthy sister. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, how you doing, sister? And I was like, yeah, we should talk to you. You should come on my show. She's like, yes, blessings and such and such. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, what's your name? I was like, my name is Amari. She's like, yes, my name is Malika. And I was like, okay, come. you should come on my show. She's like, yes, brother. So I was like, all right. So this, Hello, is, how, so this is how we come up with this um, title for this. Shout out to everybody for clicking on this shit, because I know y'all saw this shit and y'all clicked on it. Sex games and sex church, right? So, Malika, she had an organization called NYC Love Love House. Yeah, Love House. One of the events that she had was sex church. Uh, She got to unpack the intersection of exploring sexuality and spirituality in the show. That's that's one of those things. You know what? And this is why I said before, you need to go around to different events if you're a lifestyler because everybody's event is not the same. Like you said, her her mantra to her whole events are spirituality and sexuality and openness and all of those things. So many places that I've been avoid of those things. And what we all need to understand is that sex, no matter whether it's with someone you love or somebody you're attracted to, is a spiritual exchange. So shout out to Malika for facilitating that space for those who have a need to do more than just fuck. Pegasus was like, yo, how you a professional cuddler? That shit was dope too, yo. That was right. really a clip. Like, and it, like, yo, what a professional cuddler is. And JP got to walk us to, like, it's an X-rated version of Shoots and Ladders. Yo, yo. Real shit. Like, if you're hosting events, even if you're doing adult content, right, this really does, like, we flip the cards. Watch our show and see an example of how we implement that. Every time we have a guest on, what we typically do is the icebreaker is with the XXX Playground cards. Take a few cards. And we ask them some questions to get to loosen them up that are based on sexuality so that we can get to lead into the conversation. Not that we even really need it because they're sex people already. And, you know, at our events, I'm a host host. You understand what I'm saying? So we're moving around. We're, we're, you know, implementing ease and facilitating peace for, for, for our, um, event goers so I we don't say, really necessarily need to do all of that one last thing about that episode right so this mm. is you guys um remember when i talked about the closing segment that we came up with you are an idiot right so yo uh, amongst one of my favorites which this one it isn't my favorite i'm gonna get to my favorite all right amongst one of my favorites wh- how this is significant right um so check this out <laughs> I saw a clip. We were talking about open sexuality and open relationships. One person who is a superstar in this, she even has her own show, right? And we talked about how she explores, first of all, non-monogamy. And she has a slogan. Consensual non-monogamy, yes. She has a slogan, divorce proof your marriage. A black woman named Kenya Mm. Stevenson, right? Her and she has her two husbands, like they're the all right, today I it, want them more. All right, it's her and the two husbands. It's the main, and I'm not sure because I saw the sister. I I, I haven't seen the sister like that. The uh, sister or the daughter? Not the literal sister. I oh. mean the woman. There's another woman. <laughs> like so right. it was four people at the time, mm-hmm. right? Yo, so check it out. And nah, they agree. Like they um might be on season three. Yay! But um, listen. Um, they got a what is it the university the what is yes. the name of it? It's um love something university. That's horrible. Well, this is what happens when you off the cuff. My fault. It's, it's like right. her slogan is divorce proof your marriage, and, and they um, beautiful too. Yes. Y'all be thinking that the these are people. 
No, I, I passed the pastor for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The church. Listen, they have sexuality too, and this is what Carl look, Stevens. Look. So check this out. Listen, I saw the clip. <laughs> so there's a dude where like yeah, I better get first rid. of all. Why do we, well anyway, this is some of the things why that kind of frustrates me. Like yo, these type of people who do this type of content, they ended up get in further in the algorithm and all algor- algorithms in ours. My mo- like yo, the enemies get fucking faster up to the fucking algorithms than we do you know what i'm saying hold on no listen no let me explain so look nigga had yo all right so nigga had the four of them on a fucking show i was like yo how the fuck she got time for this dickhead and she ain't come on our show but stick around to see (laughs) if she maybe she might come on the show maybe they might come but anyway, um, so check this out. So at the close of the segment, <laughs> this gentleman has a platform. I don't know what it's about. He calls himself uh, Marquise the Saint, some shit like that. Marquise. <laughs> so anyway, they got into a discussion. They were talking about her platform, his platform, and such and such, discussing open relationships. Apparently, he leans on a much more conservative side mm. of not really understanding sex positivity. So here's what happened. So... His levels to the shit. Is he a beginner? So, dude was talking uh, about her exploring open relationships and such. And at some point, he was talking about the relationship and shit got real. So, he says out of his mouth, so, he says some shit like, um, uh, well, uh... They're going to actually uh, look into something. You're holding on to used vagina. So he, refer- yo, when he's talking to, he's talking to Kenya. He's talking to Carl and referred to his wife in his As face, used vagina. in his face, right? <laughs> so, and um, Carl responds at first, and he says, "Well, such and such." You know what I mean? Well, in order for people to swipe right on a Tinder profile, there's this, there's that, and such and such and such and such. Now, for context, I watched a lot of the interview. This was at like an hour into the interview. There was a lot of exchange before that and such like this. There was a lot of tension before that in the interview. So they were at like a... It seemed to be like this is where they were at a, a, at a breaking point. So Carl says, Carl Stevens, the pastor, you know what I'm saying, says... They would have to have some type of masculinity and such and such and such. But I'm sure none of your watchers and viewers would qualify for that type of shit. So don't even worry about it. Well, he didn't curse. But that's kind of the effect of what he said. Right? And then... (laughs) Yo! The nigga who... The YouTube channel... Yo! This nigga... (laughs) He snapped. (laughs) Like, I don't know what happened. That nigga just snapped and he was just like, you're insulting people and such because you and the guy next to you, you were holding her up and I didn't see a muscle in sight. Okay, so I'm a dude from the streets and such and I was um, watching a video, I maybe overanalyzed this and such like this. My personal opinion, the guy that wasn't talking, that was sitting next to Carl, the Mm -hmm. other husband, Mm -hmm. yo, like, I'm on the fence about having that type of dude around. Because the expression that he had was that, son, I will fuck you up if you was here right now. <laughs> like, he was the tool that's like, I don't even want to talk. Like, he made an expression. Like, I know this look on your face where it's like, his look on his face was, my nigga, if you was here right now. <laughs> I know that. I know that look. So he, so he did that. The other brother, I didn't get, we didn't get to hear from him. He wasn't that much interested in talking. Carl was talking. You know what I'm saying? And um, he says, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, you, he, you wouldn't even say that to them. He said, I'm saying it to you, brother. I'm saying it to you right now. Actually, this is when he snapped. This nigga lost this shit. <laughs> Yo, my dude. You remember this shit? Remember this? Mm-hmm. You don't remember? Yo. <laughs> you are an ant. <laughs> you remember that shit? <laughs> no. 
He was like, yo, nigga said, you are an ant. I'm the big bad wolf, little buddy. No. A grown ass man. Mm-hmm. Nah, nigga was like, I'm the big bad wolf, little buddy. Like, no. we know grown men do some little kid shit sometimes. So, I mean, it, dude started <laughs> raising his voice and, and, and yelling at Carl and Kenya Stevens over the fucking call, over the Zoom call and shit. You know what I'm saying? I talked about that. The reason why I bring that up. Is because um, that was an example of the um, the epi- at the end of the episode, and they soon after that launched a reality show, and maybe we'll talk to them about it. Maybe I tell you what, we got some members that are on set now, live at a real live play party. I want to. Wrap this up so we can get to show y'all some real live footage from an event mm-hmm. and talk to talk to one of our members that we got on set. We get into that. So I mean, after that, you know what I'm saying. Um, one or uh, two notable episodes that I want to make mention because, like you forgot, the reason why I wanted to make mention of these two notable episodes. Okay, first, right after that, when I was doing that, we had some people in the studio. Our next guest in the studio. Right for the next episode, which was podcasting and porn. Right, so shout out to the homie uh, Marley BBW, an award-winning adult film star plus size black woman who is from DC, moved to Brooklyn, who sat down with us and Sha, the booty enthusiast. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Respect the Blackout. So and also. I uh, wanted to say, um, last but not least, I wanted to get a special shout out to Raymond Soda, DJ Munchies, because um, to understand that was his last public appearance mm. when he got to come on our show. And rising power brand, man. Rising I didn't, power. I didn't um, get to understand that um, there was anything with his health that was going on. But um, DJ Munchies and me back when he shot, they were the respect the uh, respect the uh, respect the Black Hell podcast together collectively. We worked together when we had some events. They came on the show with Molly. Molly was on their show, talk a lot about the adult industry, and we got to talk about their perspective, and we got to talk about relationships and such. It was a moment that I wanted to definitely highlight because I just enjoyed every moment that I got to share with that brother, and. It was great to have him on my show. I'm so glad that I had him on there. Give people their flowers while they're here. Yes. While they can smell them. Yes. Which leads into the next episode. Okay? Unfortunately. So, um, now, originally, one of the things that was a real... uh, a controversial subject when we're presenting our platform talking about alternative sexuality from the black perspective i wanted to come back into talking to the race play conversation this was part two right so we figured i figured amongst us having a guest let's have a few guests so that we can have a range of voices and opinions on this we can give the conversation the most justice by having this many people on Right, so whom join us on the show? We had <laughs> Mark King, the now producer for season three. Of course, you guys see him on this show. Shout out, Mark. All right, so we was Nadine on that show too? No, Nadine wasn't on the show, but um, shout out to his wife, Nadine. <laughs> we also have my brother out in Las Vegas. You know what I'm saying? So we had my... Oh, shit. His name is escaping me right now. So my bro, he specializes specifically in interracial porn. It's been a long history in the lifestyle. He is based on the West Coast. Oh. I'm sorry. Um, It's escaping me right about now. We're drinking a lot of wine. Right, so in addition to him, we had Mark, we had him, and we had the Black and Kinky podcast. 
So, if you guys are watching that, you know why I made that face when I said we had them. Now, um, that was a long time running. I was saying I wanted to work with Black and Kinky. Again, what I've learned from season two, I know we're busy and we got things to do. Yo, try to make time for the people that you care about. Do it now. Do it now. Because you don't know. You just don't know. Do it now. That's what I learned. We have a great conversation about interracial dynamic when it comes to the lifestyle. Uh, there was a lot of voices. Black and Kinky... Black and Kinky were a podcast. A couple, Bomber and Bell. Beautiful black couple in the lifestyle community based in the DMV. Contributed a lot for many years. Also on Full Swap Radio. Rest in power to Bomber. Bomber had a strong impact on the lifestyle community. On me. Bomber is how I knew about Black Touch. And in that same season, I'm just real sorry that like I had to lose two powerful dynamic voices to sex positivity. And like I said, again, if you guys have your aspirations, especially based on whom you want to do what you want to do them with, do it now and check in on the people that you care about because you just don't know. Rest in power to Bomber. And to this day, we send prayers and positivity and support to Belle and their family. Ashe. After that, um, whom did we have uh, coming up? I got to think. So you just want to give a play-by-play -play of every single episode? I'm so certain. That they don't want to hear every single one. We done went through a whole bunch of them. Talked about a lot, a lot of interesting ones. They need to go back and rewatch them. The last one for the season. Oh yeah, what if I could say the last episode for the season? The reason why we didn't have the video for that. I don't know what the fuck happened to that shit. Shaw didn't give us the video. Yo, we were in a content party. Shout out to my boo Trinity Ava. So we were in Brooklyn. Hi. So there was a. Uh, Content party called Fantasy Film Friday. My home girl, Dom Katrina, uh, Dom Katarina, came through. She works with an organization dedicated to sex positivity as far as safety for sex workers. She came through. Maybe when Shaw came through. A, a few people came through and shot some content there. We did an episode live from there. We still didn't get the motherfucking video. That's why there ain't no video on YouTube. Why did you get quiet? Cause I'm that's I'm 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 letting you do what you do. <laughs> With season two, um, it was dope. You know what I'm saying. I definitely enjoyed implementing the closing segment. I know that that. Oh, thank you for everybody who supported that. And um, when it comes to what I have for season three. I want to make sure that we stay on topic. I'm sorry, stay on. Is that we stay on mode, I guess I would say, when it comes to delivering powerful conversation from the dynamic voices that you care about. You know what I mean? And I want to be more vulnerable. I want to talk more about what's going on. I want to talk to you guys more about what happened with my child, with my daughter, and my mom. I want to talk more about some other platforms and other people contributing to sex positivity and get to talk more about adult entertainment. What about you? I just want to talk about um, growth in LS. I want to talk about business. And for those of you who don't know, I'm going into um, life coaching with the niche being uh, perception shifting and introduction to LS for couples and single men just because I find that there is um, a little difficulty um, navigating that space. So I'm actually going into uh, that field. Um, I also want to talk about 
this up and coming trip we got going on, going away to Jamaica in 2025. I gotta explain um, that. I want to just talk about how we can grow in this space and be um, better individuals and better groups and better people all together. So what I want to do is to take everybody out. Right, so check this out. Here's how I have this designed. First off, in addition to bringing you the high quality episodes, season three was a lot of production. eye, baby. <laughs> what you say? I said you're doing a lot of eye. <laughs> We, but in addition, consent is key. Remember that. Of course, do I have your consent? No. In addition to like bringing you guys much more of the content that we bring you guys that's available on YouTube, I want you guys to have the opportunity to get much more exclusive content unfiltered. We're thinking of opening up the Patreon back. What you think about that? In addition to opening up the Patreon and giving you guys exclusive unedited content, we want to work with much more people to an extent where we're going to think about bringing our show on the road. If you're not in New York or New Jersey. And you want to sit and talk with us, share your brand and talk about what you're up to, hit us up. Let us know where you're at. What city, what state? There's a couple of places that I have in mind that we are going to try to go to in favor of bringing you guys the entertainment and the personalities that you guys are used to in person and perhaps giving you guys an after party after that hey also lastly the way that ends is you know one time we had an experiment where we shared our group space with a few black people in the lifestyle community exploring their sexuality from england Right? To this day, been a strong, strong, strong relationship. And I want to say that I learned a lot about how we're different but same. I mostly learned how we're the same. The real, real shit is the accents really separate us apart. Mm -hmm. So, um. Accents and, and the slang. <laughs> so, I want to give a shout out to World of Risque. You know what I'm saying? This dynamic black lifestyle brand based out in the UK, owned and operated by black people for black people. So we want to do something. I want to have this event in Hedo called the Culture Clash. We're going to go around the country. All of like you guys, we are fucking with us. We need y'all to join us and link up. We have a special friend that will sort it all out you guys need to check out a more getaways you'll be able to get the experience of exploring destinations as a couple as a group which are black owned in a lifestyle space exactly they're gonna help us get all of you guys in this country who are exploring your sexuality and we're gonna share our culture with, with some people black people from across from the pond. England we're going to meet in and Jamaica, that's what, though. and this is what I'm talking about when I say you need to get up and go someplace or meet pe different people from in in different states. We're trying to bring y'all people from from across out of the continent. So I want you guys to consider joining I'm to see what the fuck us. That be about come to our venue in 2025 man in jamaica we are trying to connect you guys with some culture and make sure that the lifestyle culture for black people transcends the national borders exactly listen again if you have a platform if you have a sex positive space you're black you're brown and you want us to come to your city your town and do interviews get some footage of your uh of your event or just kick it with us let us know let us know we down for it i'm definitely looking forward to getting back into what the fuck media studios and yo some of the people that have lined up for season three and some of the concepts <laughs> working with Mark, I'm real hype. Real I shit. hear that. What are you looking for? Sophia? I am looking for the, because let me tell you something. I, before it get hot and heavy, too hot and heavy for us to get this interview and give y'all some of this footage to see what it is. 
I'm gonna get to 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 our liaison. So, guys, I want y'all to make sure that y'all are subscribed to all of our platforms and go on YouTube, search Tribe Chat, and make sure that you're listening to us on Spotify. Brand new seasons. I'm sorry, brand new season will be in the fall. And make sure that you guys are staying in touch with us to see how you can get to experience tribe chat in person at some of our sex positive events. I'm trying to get them, but I think we done missed our window. I think it done, yeah. I tried, y'all. All right, y'all. My name is Omari the Rebel. And I am Mistress Pegasus. And thank you guys for giving you. I'm sorry, giving us, giving your, us your attention and your time and your ear and your eye. Yes. Oh.